Welcome fellow witches to a detailed look at The Witcher 3. Yes, this game has been heavily updated. It's now seen its 10th patch bringing it up to version 1.11. There was a one skip to make sure the PC and console versions were identical. And obviously there's been a lot of concern about this patch has now downgraded the game to fix some of the issues that it doesn't actually fix. So yeah, I don't know where that idea has come from, but obviously we'll go through that and what has actually changed, what hasn't changed. The first thing is let's look at the original disc version way back when the game launched on the Xbox One, you remember it ran with an unlocked frame rate, which is what you're seeing here. Now, riding through Novigrad, as of disc one, the unlocked frame rate, and back to version 10 that's just been released before the 1.1.1, you can see the frame rate holds a much nearer 30 on the original disc release, but it doesn't really consistently hold 30. It's skipping and juddering all over the place and hovering around the 28, 25 you can see that the 110 version is probably a little bit worse. Now on top of this you can see that LOD pairback has been subtly reduced for things like these larger areas and that's not a huge change but it looks more like a bug i.e. they hadn't got these larger areas of LOD working in the engine at launch and now they fix these. The PC release or has also seen this change throughout its LOD level as you see here. The consoles are not the only ones to receive this. It's an engine change not a platform change. Just to be clear, this is a patch that came in previous versions for the LOD pairback, not in this 1.1.0 that we're talking about. Now the Eagle Eyed may notice you've got a clean version on the left and a patch 1.10 on the right. The reason for this is the issues are asset streaming issues in the engine mostly, and it's the sheer density of Novigrad that's causing these issues across the board. With the changes made to the PS4 most likely due to the file structure system, but it seems that all the patches and obviously the crammed hard drive that I had wasn't helping this. As you see with the frame rate here as we go around the corner, you're getting dips down to 18 frames per second and, and occasionally lower on the completely rammed hard drive of my original Xbox One that only had about 200 megs free. So what I did was completely uninstall a load of games, reinstall the game from scratch and then patch it straight to 110. And now you're seeing a far more consistent version which is circa 10% and around 3 FPS improvement. If we jump to the cutscenes, we can also see some other changes that the game has made. You can see that the original release, and this is again the same on PS4 and PC, used an alpha-based texture, obviously standard fire textures, with a light source. You can see the shadow casting on the character here from the fire source below him. This has now been changed in later versions to mimic some of the other sequences that were like this when the game launched, to a much simpler sprite based animated fire, you can see it here on the PS4, Xbox One and of course the PC. Behold. Again you'll see the spike here as this is loaded in a video file effectively, causing an over 100 millisecond spike on PC and even though some may cry downgrade, it isn't. These are the kind of art and style choices made throughout development and this is simply just a better looking sequence now due to this change. There may be some performance improvements wrapped up in it but as you can see from the original disc version it's not really a massive problem anyway so it's not as if they've changed it to gain back hardly any frames at all from a capped 30 FPS game. Now on some other changes in the game since it's been released. The original game itself on all versions had these lightning effects and you can see it in the background with these texture lightning blasts and flashes which got completely missed in version 108 and 110 across all versions and now been put back in in version 11 you can see all these effects reinstated. And again just points to the fact that this is a huge task for the team, they're not a big AAA studio and this is a huge repository of tool set they're working on and these things can happen when you're changing such a huge set of data code it can easily have things missed and let's be honest even the big boys make these mistakes with Rockstar having a similar situation and patching back in with later updates so let's not give them too much of a hard time the streaming issues can be seen again here on the Xbox One with the cobbled street here loading perfectly on the original disc release but once I move to patch 110 or 111 on the internal hard drive you can see that the texture doesn't load fully and I have to stop and then it catches up and this is consistently emulated on all versions so they've definitely changed how they're streaming assets and how they're handling their file library systems within the game's code this doesn't affect the PS4 version also when you walk slowly it doesn't affect it but what I did was I changed to an external hard drive using the USB 3.0 port and an SSHD and reinstalled the entire game on there and then patched it back to 110 and 111. 
and that actually fixes the issue. You can now see that it doesn't do what it was doing on the previous patches on the internal hard drive, but the same patch version is now fixed. Now this is due to the fact that the hard drive is obviously spinning its platters less and not hitting the edge of the drive, but also improved latency on that drive is helping this. Just to prove there is no issue with the downgrade as people are panicking, you can see here the Xbox One from disc version to now, there's no difference in visual quality. Aside from the missing water shader work that was missing from the launch version as I covered in my head to head at the time, but has been subsequently reinstated. Just to reaffirm the streaming issue, as you can see here on the Xbox One as I stop walking, the frame rate shoots back up to a constant 30 and this is on the internal hard drive. If we push to the external hard drive and you walk slowly, you actually get a smooth 30 FPS just like on the PS4. Don't get me wrong, the streaming issues are in the game and the engine, not a platform issue. But it doesn't fix the issues across the board. The loading on consoles with a save is still horrendously too long. You can see here as a comparison from all versions on the PC, Xbox One and PS4. It takes only 27 seconds on the PC, whereas the PS4 comes in at 1 minute 24 seconds and the Xbox One comes in at 1 minute 27. Drop that down to 1 minute 24 when you run it on the external hard drive. Bearing in mind I've changed my PS4 to a 2TB SSHD also. So if you are looking to improve the performance of The Witcher 3, then I recommend you either free up some space or buy yourself an external hard drive. And there's many available. And stick it on the back of your USB port. You can buy one for about 40 quid now for a 1TB Seagate drive. I'll put some links in the video below if you're looking for a drive to replace it with and a caddy to plug it straight into. You can save yourself a few pounds by buying a cheaper caddy and then just popping the case off and swapping the drive. It's entirely up to you. This will improve both space and games that you stream in and there's many forthcoming ones like Fallout 4 and I'm just trying to highlight the fact that any issues in a games engine do not always come down to just a GPU or a CPU conversation. In fact, probably one of the biggest bottlenecks you're seeing in some of the bigger games this generation is going to be the mechanical hard drives and bearing in mind we're streaming a lot more asset quality and denser worlds this generation than we ever were last and The Witcher 3 is definitely in that cycle. IO access is a big part of hardware and software, and when it comes to video games, they're not shy on their file sizes. And more importantly, lots of little ones rather than one large big one. That sounds a bit wrong. Moving swiftly on. To recap, basically what we're looking at here is a switch to an external hard drive is offering up around 10% performance improvements in this particular game. And other titles may fare better or worse or no different at all, but you can be sure I'll be covering it in more detail in future videos. As always, if you guys and girls enjoyed this, which I hope you did, then please hit the like and subscribe button, it really helps me immensely. Leave all your thoughts and your feedback below, and I'll catch you very soon on the next one. Why'd your hair go white?